Today, we look at an indicator with a difference. Certainly from the indicators that I have knowledge of, this one is fairly unique in the way that it interprets what's happening in the markets, but also in the way that it conveys that to you, the trader. Interested? Then stay tuned. We've spent a lot of time looking at how volume data and volume indicators can help us to gain insights into what's really happening in the markets. And volume undoubtedly provides a whole new dimension to that analysis beyond what we can get from looking at price action alone. However, some traders can struggle with that relationship between volume and price action patterns and determining what that really means. But the indicator that I look at today, which is far less well known than the volume indicators I've covered previously, performs some of that analysis for you and provides that to the trader by using four colour coded states. And that indicates what's happening with the market internals at any point in time. Welcome to the Market Facilitation Index. Now, usually indicators have a shortened term, but unfortunately the letters for the Market Facilitation Index are the same as the Money Flow Index. And so to distinguish between these, I'll use MKFI especially since it's only in the last episode that I was looking at the Money Flow Index. Now, this is an indicator that was developed by Bill Williams. And although it's a volume-based indicator like the others that we've studied, this one definitely has a difference. Now, I consider this as actually a multi-dimensional indicator because it looks at two different factors, each that can have two states, which gives us a total of four states that the market can be in at any point in time. And with this indicator, it's the colour of the bars that indicate which state we're in at the moment. Now, as I said in the introduction, this is a really great option, firstly, if you struggle with the manual interpretation of volume data in relation to price action. But I would say that this is generally an extremely useful indicator anyway, even if you don't have problems with that. And also, if you're an algo trader, then this is potentially easier to implement within your algos because you can simply request from the indicator, which state are we currently in? So here we've got a representation of what that looks like. And you can see the market facilitation index here at the bottom. And as you can see, this has four possible colours. We have green, pink, blue and brown. Now, if you had to sum up what this indicator tells you, then this is a good starting point. It aims to determine the willingness of the market to move the price. So in other words, the willingness of trader participation to force those meaningful directional moves. And I'll be talking about this a lot in this and future episodes, and also digging down into the detail of how this relates to those four different states. So let's start to take a look at those four states right now. Now, each of the colors has its own name, and let's cover the green state first. Now, in order for the market to be categorized as green, it needs to meet two primary conditions. Firstly, there needs to be an increasing number of traders entering the market, or you might look at this as an increase in the activity of the market. But alongside that, we also need to see the market price being driven strongly. And if both of these conditions are met, then the market is in a green state. But you'll need to wait until the next episode where I talk about how these two conditions are measured and also how they're calculated. So if you just accept them for now, we can then move on to what the indications are of this state. So in other words, what is it telling us? Well, firstly, it means that the market is moving with real purpose. 
And if you're a trend follower, then one potential use of this is as a filter to say whether you should be entering in the direction of that move or not. So for example, if you've used some other condition or some other indicator to tell you to enter, then you could potentially use this as a filter. So if we were in a green state, you would be allowed to enter that trade. And if we weren't, then you wouldn't. But additionally, if you're currently holding a position in the opposite direction to the price move when we get a green state, then you might also consider exiting because there's a good chance that price is going to go away from you, sending your position underwater. Let's now move on to the next state. And this is when we have bars of color brown. And this state is called the fade state. Now, what are the conditions that determine if we have this fade state? Well, the first one is that there are only a few new traders entering the market. And generally, we're seeing low levels of trading activity. But also, we're going to see very small price moves, which really means that the market participants seem to have lost interest in this asset at the current time. But again, you'll have to wait for the next episode for me to go through the rationale and the calculation that sits behind these two conditions. But let's move straight on now to what this tells us. Well, firstly, traders are currently very indifferent about this asset. They've lost interest and they're probably looking for opportunities in alternative assets. But what this brown state is very good at is giving us an early indication that the previous trend has now ended. And because of that, if you were holding a position through that trend, then you might want to consider exiting now. Whereas if you don't have any open positions right now, then probably you're better sitting back, holding tight and waiting for the next main move. So now is probably not the time to enter a position. Now, interestingly, if we see a number of consecutive brown bars, purely because of the reason around market cycles and the way that markets change periodically, it's probably a good indication that the new move is coming soon. But of course, as of yet, we don't know which direction that will be in. So again, sit back, look for opportunities elsewhere, and wait for something to start happening in this before we make any decisions. Let's move on to state three. This is where the bars are color coded blue, and this is termed the fake state. What conditions do we need for this? Well, firstly, we need to see increasing movement in the price. But critically, in order for this condition to be met, we also need to see low or declining trader activity. And this is where the state gets its name. Often, the price move that we see here will be fake or short-lived. And the probabilities tell us that a reversal might be likely. But more than that, the lack of any volume of traders showing interest in this price move in certain circumstances, such as a potential breakout from a trading range, means that the probabilities are more in favor of this being a fake out, not a successful breakout. But as I said before, very often this condition leads to some form of price reversal. Now the fourth and final state. This is pink and usually termed the squat state. Now the conditions here are that we need to see a growing interest in this particular asset manifesting itself by increased trader participation. But alongside that, we notice that the price is not yet moving significantly. Meet these two conditions and we're in the squat state. And what this is telling us is that there is a battle ranging in the markets for this particular asset between the buyers and the sellers. However, at the moment, that battle is fairly equally matched, which means the price 
isn't going anywhere. However, the trading activity behind the scenes could be high or even frenzied at this point in time. And what this means is that a new directional move is imminent. But at the moment, again, we don't know which direction is going to win. But sure enough, some point soon, one or the other will win out and the price will begin to move. I usually consider this like being a spring that's wound up tighter and tighter. And at the moment, nothing is happening. But if you then release the key from that spring, all of a sudden, the spring releases just like the price action often releases following this state. So if it was up to me, I'd be calling this the spring state. But hey, I didn't develop the indicator. Now, depending on the context here of where we are in price action, if we are in a trading range, then very often this is a great indication that we'll have a successful breakout on our hands. Okay, so that's the introduction into this indicator. In the next episode, I'm going to be looking at why these four states exist and also how they're calculated. And it really is this fundamental understanding of these two factors, the how and the why, that will enhance your ability to use this indicator most effectively. In the episode that follows that, just like I've done before, I'll then start putting this market facilitation index into practice and showing you examples on real charts. Hopefully you found that introduction to this indicator useful. If the next episode that I mentioned a moment ago is already available, then you'll see that top right now. If not, please subscribe so you get notified when it does become available. Please give me a like if you've got value. But now until next time, trade wise, trade safe.